Welcome to the season two of the Smart and Sustainable City podcast. Today, we go to a smart city called Puy. Puy is a small and quiet town along Lake Geneva in Switzerland. It has 18,000 residents and covers only 5.8 square kilometers. That's 2.2 square miles. It is famous for its quality of life and its excellent wine. Puy prides itself to be human, friendly, efficient, and practical. Recently, in December 2019, this little town surprised the smart city community by announcing a major milestone achievement. It had verified and validated itself with the United Nations as the first Swiss smart city. And, again as a first, published its full certification report on its website at puy.ch. The smart city attention had been centered until then around larger cities such as Boston, London, Dubai, Singapore, Moscow, Barcelona, or Vienna. But with the help of the United Nations program, United for Smart and Sustainable Cities, some smaller cities such as Bizert in Tunisia or Puy in Switzerland demonstrated that a smaller community can set itself on a path to sustainability. That being smart with its partnership and smart with its use of the right technology, any city, no matter its size or development, can become a smart city. We talk today with Alexandre Bossart. Alexandre is a member of the board and technical coordinator in the utility department at the city of Puy. Alexandre gives us some perspective on the work PE has done to go through this United Nations smart city verification process and shares some tips for other cities wanting to embark on the same journey. My name is Alexandre Bossard. Uh, I work for the city of Puy, which is a little city with uh, 18,000 inhabitants, uh, which overlooks the Lemon Lake near Lausanne and Geneva in Switzerland. Um, More specifically, uh, I am a member of the board and the coordinator for the Department of Industrial Services and Technical Office in Puy, which means uh, I pilot a a complex project. The surface of the city is 5.8 square kilometers Yes. Uh, or 2.2 <laughs> square miles. So mm-hmm. it's it's not very large, is it? No, it isn't uh, very large. It's a little city. But also our, our size, little size, is, is an advantage because we are um, uh, little enough to be very agile and to know everybody in the administration. So to lead projects, it's very useful. And we are uh, enough uh, big to have all the basic competencies to to lead uh, complex projects and smart city projects, for example. And Puy is also a wine country. So you have very good wine, actually, uh, in in Puy. And it's both red and white wine. Yes, we have both red and white wine. And uh, the the city uh, has uh, its own uh, wine yard. And uh, we have uh, we produce uh, uh, white and red wine. Excellent, fantastic! So another reason to come and and visit the city and taste the <laughs> the the local production. Yes, it's it's not just a great view and the fantastic uh, the Lake Leman, as you call it. So it's like Geneva, uh, or you call it Lake Leman, Le right? In 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 Puy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Alexandre, why did Puy decide to embark on this verification journey with the International Telecommunication Union? For us, it uh, it was um, a pilot project. It was uh, effectively a, a journey. Um, so we we suggest to our uh, politician to to do this. Uh, this uh, to apply this methodology and they, they accept. And uh, the idea is to have uh, a tool which, which can um, 
help politicians and also the administration and the citizen uh, for piloting the, the, the city, the development of the city. So the tool is useful to give directions uh, for politicians. Does, does it help you assess the situation through all the KPIs that you mentioned? So you do a, a first assessment of what is the situation in the city? Yes, it is an assessment. Uh, this assessment is useful for the, the medium and long-term initiatives. For the short term, it's not the, the right tool. But it gives the general trend, uh, and uh, we we have uh, taken this this tool uh, as a photograph a photography of the situation, you know, and uh, then when th we will have the election, uh, the idea is that it will help a politician to write their uh, legislative program. Legislative program is a, a report where a politician write what they want to achieve during the the period where where they are elected. So the verification helps you assess the situation at a particular point in time, and then what you're saying is that over time, uh, in in a few years, you do another assessment. And you measure progress on each of those indicators? Yes, that's the idea. Yes. Every five years, for example, uh, just uh, after the election, we, we do this assessment and we measure um, what was achieved and what was not achieved. I saw on your website, as well as on the ITU website, that you published this report and I was very impressed with the number of data points that you had to go through. Mm -hmm. You have a hundred KPIs you had to evaluate and this must have been a, a, a massive undertaking. Uh, yes and not because uh, around uh, 60 or 70 percent of the KPIs are KPIs we manage uh, uh, in the city of Puy. So we have those KPI. For example, we have to produce those KPIs for the report at the end of the each year. We, we write a, a general report, a, a gest, gestion report, we, we call this document. Man the management report? Or management uh, report, where you, you, you write what you have done during the year, what are the, the, the targets which are achieved, etc. Et so around 70% of the KPIs were already measured uh, on, on this report. And 30% of the KPIs uh, are measured by the um, regional level or the national level. So that was more difficult to... To, to to calculate or to find those uh, those KPIs, but now we know where we we must where we can find those KPIs, and that that took a, a, a certain uh, effort to to achieve uh, uh, to collect those uh, those KPIs. I see. So some of the information was available locally. And some of the information you had to go out to different organizations in the country to collect them. Exactly. But as you have to go and do the next survey, now you know exactly where to find the information mm -hmm. and the process will be much faster. Exactly. Uh, I hope so. Well, I'm sure it will be much uh, faster, yes. Mm -hmm. And give us a sense of what are some of those KPIs, because we mentioned how many KPIs were there? Is about a hundred KPIs? Uh, officially, there there are um, eighty seven KPIs, but some of them have uh, sub KPIs. So uh, at the end, it's around uh, one hundred KPIs. Yes. Uh, so the, the the kind of KPIs uh, you have um, uh, KPIs based uh, on smart uh, theme and KPIs based on the sustainability uh, themes. 
So for example, uh, for smart uh, themes, you have uh, uh, open data uh, or uh, percentage of smart city, smart electricity meters. Um, and for uh, sustainable development themes, you have, for example, um, drinking water quality or uh, greenhouse gas emission or uh, low carbon emission passenger ve vehicles, etc. And you, the, the proportion is around 30% of the KPIs are smart KPIs and 70% uh, of KPIs are uh, sustainability, sustainable KPIs. And all those uh, KPIs I, are based on uh, the UN uh, sustainable uh, objectives. And in collecting all of that information, did you collaborate with the United Nations to better understand what each of those KPIs meant and how to collect the information? Uh, yes, we have uh, we had a, a strong collaboration with uh, ITU, um, and when we had question, we we asked to ITU uh, how we how we can how we have to measure uh, that kind of tape KPIs because uh, sometimes it's a uh, it's a bit difficult to understand how to measure it. And uh, yes, that was a strong collaboration. We had also a collaboration with uh, Swisscom, with, we, which is a telecom uh, operator. And they were uh, very interested to, to measure the impact of uh, um, ICT on, uh, on the cities. And uh, we worked, uh, we have a strong collaboration with them also. Was it hard to uh, once you had the measurements for each of the KPI to define a target, uh, were you actually asked to define a target for each of the KPIs, or was this not mandatory? Uh, in in the in the United for Smart and Sustainable Cities initiative, which is the name of uh, this uh, method, ITU methodology, um, you you don't have uh, any target. You just have the KPI, you measure the KPI. So you have one measurement, but you don't know, is it good? Is it uh, bad? Uh, where I am? That's why we did a second step and we collect uh, the, the target values based on the, on the Swiss laws. It took uh, around, uh, I don't know, uh, perhaps two months uh, to collect uh, all the all the target values and uh, some of them we had uh, uh, target values based on laws but sometimes uh, we didn't find any laws to to have a target value so we took uh, statistics or we said we don't have anything so we can't measure uh, the the target so the process doesn't require you to have a particular target for each kpi but you went above and beyond the process to set your own objectives and targets for each KPI and to measure the performance of the city against those targets. Uh, is this correct? Yes, it is correct. And I, I think it's a work in progress uh, uh, job because uh, uh, year after year, we will perhaps uh, find a better target value or and with the with the discussion with the politician or with the citizen, we can adapt the value. And uh, I think uh, uh, yes, the target values. It's very useful to know where I am uh, now. Uh, and uh, but it will uh, uh, years after years we, we will uh, see an evolution of those uh, target values. I see in your report that you spent a lot of time in representing each of the metrics, each of the KPI, 
and also to provide your politicians with a general representation of what the study says. Can you tell us a little bit about this formatting effort, which is very important to be able to read and understand what the report says? Yes, we wanted uh, uh, this measure, this uh, application of the U4SSC initiative, we wanted to do something which is useful for the, the politicians, of course, but also for the administration, for the, the other cities, to communicate with other cities, and also with the citizens, so that we can debate uh, on the different aspects uh, which are measured uh, in the U4SSC initiative. But if we want to debate with citizens or even with politicians or with other cities, uh, we have to, we had to develop um, a visualis visualization of the results, which is intuitive and also attractive uh, and not publishing uh, a report for experts uh, which is read only by experts. That's why we we did this uh, particular this effort to have something uh, a pedagogic document uh, which can be read by everybody. Yes, because you posted that document on your city website, and it's also posted on the ITU website, and mm -hmm. I I think it's one of the very first. Uh, documents that was ever published that goes into full transparency of all those KPIs and all those uh, targeting exercises that you have carried on at the level of depth that you have demonstrated. And for a city which is, uh, I don't want to say small, but 18,000 inhabitants is much smaller than some of the first names that we have in mind when we think about smart cities. Mm -hmm. Was it a difficult exercise to uh, discuss before starting the program, uh, to, to discuss with city officials and your colleagues? Uh, was there a lot of discussions before actually launching the, the project? Uh, we, in fact, we first we ask uh, uh, the other uh, chief of the different departments, we asked them, are they interested in participating in this uh, um, uh, initiative? And they approved. And then we, we went to the politician and we asked also the politician, uh, are you interested? At, and, and they also approved. So it was more a bottom up uh, process than a top down process, you know. And the uh, politician said, okay, we are interested. And uh, then uh, we developed, uh, we worked on this initiative. And that uh, whole preparation phase and uh, trying to rally uh, agreements among all your colleagues and the politicians, how long did that process uh, take? It was very short. Uh, we had the first meeting with ITU end of uh, February, and uh, we began the, the measurements uh, in April. So it took around uh, one month. What, one month to, to get alignment within the city exactly. about and the it, project. And this is very important uh, uh, to have this alignment. Otherwise, uh, you don't have access to all the KPIs or Yes. Right, really because everybody contributes. Have, uh, yeah, it's, it's very important to have a participative approach uh, so that everybody uh, contributes to the, uh, to, to the effort. And then you embark on the collection of all the information that you needed, according to the ITU. You worked with ITU to help you understand those different metrics. How long did that uh, period take the collection time? Uh, we collected uh, the KPIs uh, from April 2017 to September 2017. So around three months, uh, not at full time. 
uh, and then uh, we had to wait because uh, the the assessment the assessor uh, there is there was only one assessor for the 50 uh, cities worldwide who is uh, based in uh, in Canada so we had to wait that he's uh, free to he has uh, time to to come uh, in in Puy to do the assessment and he did this assessment uh, in february 2018 and in uh, april we received the certification and how long did his assessments take basically he practically he comes over to the city and then you present the work that you have done and uh, the information that you collected yes we we he stayed uh, two days in puy so we stayed in a in a conference room during two days and uh, he asked us a lot of questions about the kpis he took uh, one kpis kpis after one kpi and uh, um, we, uh, we we are we answered uh, his questions mm -hmm. So it's an independent verification or audit of your work and of the KPIs uh, on the data points that you collected. Yes, mm -hmm. he, he he wanted to to see where are the sources of the information. That was the most important thing. When we say uh, this KPI, we have uh, the result of eighty percent. He asked. Uh, from where do you know that it's 80 percent and in switzerland i discovered we have a really uh, good databases uh, and uh, i think he was pretty uh, uh, he found it was a pretty good uh, job we did and uh, the quality of data was uh, very interesting and then the auditor obviously went back home and and gave you your verification certificate, your uh, smart city certificate, how long after? Uh, one month after, he, we received uh, uh, the, the assessment report. And then uh, we received, we had an official uh, uh, event in, uh, where was it, in Malaga, in Spain. Um, what uh, ITU uh, uh, gave us the certification. What would be some thoughts that you could share with some other cities about this whole process and some of the learnings that they need to bear in mind as they embark themselves on a verification process? Hello. On the verification process, I think... Uh, it is uh, pretty easy. You you can go on the website, uh, IT website, on the page uh, U4SSC, United for Smart and Sustainable Cities. And there you have uh, the methodology. You can download it and uh, beginning. Uh, and you have also to, if you want to be certified, you have to write uh, a letter to ITU and to to uh, to ask uh, the certification and then you you begin to to collect uh, the the kpis so it's not uh, something it's pretty easy to to do that you just need to have time around i would say uh, two or three months full time to to collect the data and when you say full time how many people worked full time on this project uh, there was nobody who worked uh, full time. Uh, I worked around. Uh, I did. Uh, I think perhaps ten percent of my time or twenty percent of my time, uh, and uh, I had also a collaborator from uh, Swisscom who worked uh, forty percent of uh, her time during uh, two years so it's a great project for a trainee or uh, somebody that is passionate about smart cities but it's not a full-time job it is basically a process that needs to be run 
rigorously mm-hmm. by somebody with a city tag or a city official uh, approval yeah. to it, run the process. It's very interesting because you see uh, all the aspects of, uh, of the city. You have a, a systemic view on the city. And that was very appreciated by also by politicians because they have all their own department and they can see uh, real the details uh, on each department. So it, for a Tunis, it's very interesting. Um, we worked uh, part time because we had also other projects to lead in parallel. But uh, of course, you can work uh, full time during two or three months, and it's uh, it's finished. You have collect all your data, so it depends the the way you want to to work. And I think you mentioned the absolute need to get alignments with city officials, uh, both uh, on the political side and on the city management side. This is uh, really important. Uh, As I mentioned uh, before, we had a bottom-up way of doing this project, Uh, but it can also be a top-down way. The politician uh, uh, wants to... uh, um, participate to you for SSC initiative and they ask uh, their department to 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 manage uh, to the, the the project so uh, it depends uh, the the way you want to manage it but uh, in every case you have to have uh, an approval uh, of the different levels to be efficient and this process is valid for large cities, of course, but also smaller cities. So you felt your size was not an inhibitor to drive this process forward? No, because uh, in our city, we have all the uh, utility, uh, we have the utility department. Some cities have, this is a society which is external of the city. Uh, and we manage uh, all the, the aspects of a city, so you can be little, uh, medium, or big city. Uh, it's the same. Uh, you have the same things to to manage: uh, fresh water, uh, electricity. Uh, we, we we find those uh, utilities in uh, every cities, in fact, or school, or uh, or uh, buildings, or. Uh, social aspects or finance, you, you find that uh, in every cities. So it, the, the size is not very uh, important for this initiative. Alexandre Bossard from the city of Puy, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Smart and Sustainable City podcast. Don't forget to subscribe. If you're responsible for a smart city initiative, do reach out. You can reach us at pierre.murless at partner360.net.